That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Northman, the highly anticipated third feature directed by Robert Eggers, which Focus Features is distributing April 22nd, 2022. Do I know Robert's other films? Mm-hmm. Okay. The Witch. I enjoyed that. And The Lighthouse. I enjoyed that. Yes. Okay. So I, I think it's fair to say if you have experienced one or both of those, you'll most likely be excited for The Northman. Uh... The basic story. It's based on, loosely based on the legend of Amleth. Which is what Hamlet is based off of. Which would, (laughs) halfway through this, I'm like, God, this is so similar to Hamlet, but this is where William Shakespeare derived Hamlet. Okay, basic story. So when Alexander Skarsgård was a kid, his dad, Ethan Hawke. King Arvindil. Was killed by his brother, Klaus Bang. Fulner. Okay. Ethan Hawke was married to Nicole Kidman. Queen Gudrun. Alexander Skarsgård's mom. So this is all happening when he's a little kid. So his dad, Ethan Hawke, is killed by his uncle, Klaus Bang. And then they're threatening to kill Alexander as a little boy, so he escapes. Mm-hmm. And he goes off to live with like this pack of men who live like wolves. They're called berserkers, uh, <laughs> which is a word that's derived from bearskin. It's basically oh. these men that put themselves in bear skin and kind of act like animals and they're kind of um, unruly gang members. Think like uh, this, how the samurai originated in Japan. Okay. So in the trailer, you can hear Alexander's character saying like, avenge my, what, what is it? Uh, I will avenge you father. I will save you mother. I will kill you f- Fulner. Something like that. So his, his character is preoccupied with getting revenge on his uncle who killed his dad. And has also married his mother. Mm -hmm. So now this man he wants to kill is like his father uncle. Mm -hmm. So uh, when Alexander is an adult, he hops his ass on a slave boat to go back to the region where his uncle and mom are living as a married couple. With the intention of killing him. And when he gets there, he does kill a few people. When he finally gets to his mother, she's like, fool, the gag is, I hated your dad. I prayed he would die. Like, I wanted your uncle to kill him. So you coming back to get vengeance is pointless. And if you kill your uncle, then I'll be your queen. Like, they'll be a couple. And there is a scene where mom and son make out. And if you think of it, the real gag is Amleth means fool. (laughs) So he's kind of defeated and decides, like, well, let me abandon ship. It's important to know that Alexander's character has a little girlfriend. Olga, played by Anya Taylor-Joy. So they're also kind of a witch. Okay, you can explain all the little things, but... So then as they're leaving, his little girlfriend tells him, I'm pregnant. With twins. And that's when Alexander realizes, like, I have to finish what I started or this shit will haunt me and my family forever. So he goes back and kills his mom and his uncle dad. Mm -hmm. The end. Yes, and left bleeding out with a, a vision of a chariot riding into Valhalla. People hate when I don't watch the movies. I didn't watch this one either. I wanted to, mm-hmm. but... This was a junket screening because uh, I requested to interview Willem Dafoe. Right. Who's really only in two scenes. So Very effective as well. So I didn't get to watch it, but I will. Mm-hmm. Anyway, tell us what you think. Well, first of all, as I said, I had went in blind uh and uh, it very much makes sense that this is the uh impetus behind hamlet there's actually already a film version of amleth's tale that uh gabriel axel directed in 1994 that's the director of babette's feast uh starring gabriel byrne and christian bale and helen mirren called royal deceit which i have not seen which i'm really curious to go back and watch now did you like this movie yes i felt a little cold towards it but That might be because there are uh, familiarities. And once we get into where uh, uh, Amleth is the main point uh, as an adult uh, and all of these kind of fun supporting characters kind of fall to the wayside, I think there's a long stretch where I was a little disinterested. And not to say that there's anything wrong with uh, Skarsgård's performance, uh, but... Do we see him nude? Not that I recall. What? We see flashes of... Things. There's a sex scene with Annie Taylor Joy, but I don't. I don't know. In what region of the world are they in? Iceland. 
Do they speak English? That's another thing that I didn't like is this heavily accented English. And I do really like Nicole Kidman. I think she's uh, wonderful as uh, the toxic Mother Gudrun. Uh, but again, she's doing... Mother Gudrun? Mother Gud Queen Gudrun. <laughs> That's a name I've loved since seeing Glenda Jackson and Women in Love. <laughs> anyway, uh, she uh, is using an accent that's not unlike her Russian accent in Nine Perfect Strangers, which I hated. Mm. Uh, but she's doing the same thing everybody else is here. So you, you kind of get lost in it. But for Eggers, who uh, is somebody that pays, like he did with a witch, like a, a huge amount of research uh, and detail. was in. It, it's funny that the, to me that they're speaking English. Bjork is in the movie. Bjork, this is her first movie since uh, Drawing Restraint 9, which was directed by her... Uh, now ex-husband Matthew Barney. Uh, she is only in one scene, the CRS, and I think a witch, basically. She's the one that, because um, Amleth flees to what we're told is the land of Rus, uh, basically, uh, to me, I, it's my understanding that the history of that region between uh, who's claiming Russia and Belarus is also highly contentious, but this film says that's where they are. She makes an appearance to him and reminds him, you made a promise to your father before he was slain that were he to be killed, you would, the only thing you would focus on in your life is avenging death. And there's a really good line I think he has at one point that his life is basically a living death. Uh, it, so the script, which was co-written by Sh Sean, S-J-O-N, if I'm saying his name right, who is the writer of Lamb uh, with, with Numi Rapace. Oh, I watched that. Yes. Uh, he's also credited as a libertist, if I'm saying that right, on uh, Dancer in the Dark, the Bjork film with the Lars von Trier directed her in. Um, Basically, the the dialogue portion of the opera, I think, is what that is. Anyhow, uh, I, I do like this script of a very familiar story. I think it's it looks excellent. It was shot by Yaren Blaschke, who, uh, of course, shot The Witch and The Lighthouse for Robert Eggers. Um, what does my friend Willem Dafoe do in the movie? He's uh, Heimar the Fool. <laughs> so there's one kind of drug and do scene where uh ethan hawk and his kid th that's where the pact is made uh in, in this underground lair uh, that he makes this promise to him and there's a really another really good scene another sorcerer which i believe is the same entity as the bjork character uh that appears in the form of ingvar uh, sigurdsson who you saw on a white white day and many other icelandic films uh has that the, man yeah has the dried out head of willem dafoe uh which basically is a sequence that leads him to his special sword that can only be unsheathed under certain requirements uh you know not unlike thor's hammer how are the basically. action sequences pretty good there's a lot of uh short spurts of uh you know bloody violence like uh, decapitation there's there's this very decapitate uh film there, decapitate there, there are at least three uh that i can think of that'd be a good uh t-shirt with like the word decapitate and then like heads yeah like when you say <laughs> like how once upon a time in america is pretty rapey this is pretty decapitate okay. um yes i i liked everything about that again i just i i think my expectation that this would be a lot more gonzo perhaps if you will but a day after seeing it, it's kind of sat with me a bit more and and there there's a, a a lot of weird interesting things going on with uh obviously norse mythology uh medieval pre-medieval uh, if any of that of those things you really like uh I, the casting is interesting um bill bill sarsgaard sarsgaard was supposed to be thorir uh fjord yeah, Fulner's son, who's grown up and comes to hate him, he kills his cousin. It's played by Gustav Lind from uh, Queen of Hearts. But that was supposed to be his own real-life brother, which I think would have made... Pennywise? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I think it's interesting that Nicole and Alexander were lover... Well, were husband and wife in Big Little Lies. Mm. And here, there's a weird twist Very on that kind of relationship. Not unlike... Remember how Sally Field played Tom Hanks' girlfriend and then mother in a matter of years mm -hmm. in the nineties? Mm -hmm. um, also, a lot of returning a lot. Uh, Kate Dickinson and Ralph Innocent from The Witch make small appearances. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy, I think, is an interesting screen presence. I, I got the sense that they're trying to model Olga kind of after his mother with this long, as they say, the the, the hair of a Valkyrie. Uh, yes, if you are interested in this kind of particular history at all i think there's a, a lot here to feast upon um and you know i like i like every, i like ethan hawk uh i think they're all all of it is well cast except i just the english i just don't did you go through all of your notes 
wise is the man who can be the fool. Uh, again, lo lots of little interesting things, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I see why it maybe didn't have a major film festival uh, release ahead of time, because I think everybody predicted this would be in Berlin with the April release date. But What would you give it? Uh, I would give it three and a half. That's five. very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's excellent. It's worth seeing. Well, excellent sure. is four. You can be 3.5 and excellent. Okay. I, I oh. just, I, again, I... <laughs> you can be skim milk with whole milk at the same time. Oh, what there's one, one, there's one really good scene. Me, uh, myself, and one other person <laughs> laughed out loud where uh, uh, Amleth presents himself on this hilltop basically to save Annie Taylor-Joy and he's already had his like, kiss with Nicole Kidman and knows her betrayal and she sees him and she's like, kill him! <laughs> But it, it plays so strange. It, it almost is a moment of camp. But it's like, oh my God, girl. Uh, yes. Yeah. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Bye.